to our question and answer program, I'd like to know. I just want to mention that if you have questions that you would like to find answers for, uh, we're here for you. Uh, sometimes there are questions that there are no answers for, and uh, so we'll just have to fold our hands and say, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, this program is I'd like to know. So please send us your questions. Let me give you the email address, tv at sumtv.org, tv at sumtv.org. Uh, let me just mention something else as we begin, and that is uh, people are wondering about the relationship between Secrets Unsealed and Some TV. Well, basically, it's the same ministry. Uh, Secrets Unsealed is mainly the production side, whereas Some TV is the broadcasting side. So don't think that there are two different ministries. They're basically the same ministry, two parts. I have here with me my good friend, C.A. Murray. Good to be here. And uh, it's always good to see you here for the program. <laughs> uh, good to have uh, support. And uh, so we have um, four <coughs> questions today, C.A., and I don't know if we're going to be able to get to all of them, but uh, let me throw out the first one. Uh, the first question is, where will God's people be during the thousand years or during the millennium? You know, there's some confusion on that issue. Mm -hmm. um, probably most Christians believe that, uh, you know, there's going to be a kingdom of peace here during the thousand years where people will live in their mortal bodies and so on. Uh -huh. And uh, then there's, of course, the Adventist view, which is different. So kick it off. All right, there, there are two ways to sort of attack this. Um, one doesn't mention the millennium per se or the thousand years, and the other does. Um, we can go the First Thessalonians 4.16 route, which talks about Christ coming back and we're ever with the Lord, or we can go to Revelation 20, which uh, gives us the, the, the mention of the thousand years. So perhaps that's the better place to start because we get a mention of this thousand year period. I'm in Revelation chapter 20. I think I'll start at verse 1. Okay. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit. And these are all important things that hopefully we'll get to in just a little bit. Uh, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon and the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, bound him for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit. I think we can start, stop there. We have the mention of a thousand years. Of course, as you well know, the word millennium as a word does not appear, but it is certainly suggested in this thousand years. Milli mm -hmm. meaning thousand, annum meaning year. So we're talking about a thousand year period uh, that is mentioned in the word of God. And uh, again, Two ways to look at it. What Satan will be doing during that thousand years, and I guess we, we need to attach, tap on that, and also what will God's people be doing uh -huh. during the thousand years? Well, when we talk about the disposition of the saints, uh, perhaps it's better to go back to 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the, arch, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, now, here's the first clue. The dead in Christ shall rise first. first. So those, as you well know, who have slept, uh, who, are, who are sleeping in the Lord, who have lived for the Lord, died in Christ Jesus, will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So from that time on, God's people will always be with him, or he will always be with them. That is uh, in perpetuity. Now, we may be in different places, and that's where I think we're heading, yeah. uh, but we're always going to be together. Mm -hmm. So the, the dead in Christ will rise to be joined by those living in Christ, and then we will be with the Lord throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Um, there is another disposition for the dead wicked and the living wicked, and the question didn't ask that, so maybe we'll hold on to that for now. But for now, during the first part of eternity, really, Pastor, we're going to be with the Lord. Uh, now, uh, we need to go into where we're going to be and what we're going to be doing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we know we're going to be with the Lord. So we're mm -hmm. going to have like a working vacation. Is that what you're saying about? Well, it, it won't be a vacation because um, one of the things we're going to be doing according to this is that we're going to be looking over and judging to see that what the Lord did, he did right. Now, we know that he, he did do right, because God always does right. But um, there are other worlds looking on, there are other beings looking on, the universe is looking on. This uh, 
earth that we, we, we live on. Uh, Ellen White says it's a lesson book. There are people looking on who want to know, who also want to know uh, mm -hmm. what, what yeah, happened yeah. and, and, and uh, uh, individuals. So one of the things we're going to be doing, um, let me see, is going over and making certain that those who deserve to get in got in and those who didn't deserve to get in did not get in. I think at verse 4 is where you have... Uh, that specific point that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. it says, I saw thrones, yes. and they sat on them, mm -hmm. and judgment was committed to them. Yes. In other words, this is not them being judged, they are actually being judges. Uh-huh, they're being uh, judges, And yes. then it says, uh, then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and not worship the beast or his image, not received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived, which means that they must have been dead before, mm -hmm. and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So okay. Two things, reigning mm -hmm. and judging. Reigning and judging. Who, so that's not vacation judge? language. I didn't lose something in my eye there. This is not vacation language. This is um, work that's being done. <laughs> and of course, what we're going to be looking at are the records of those who did not make it. Because those who are saved are there with us doing the judging. So uh, the only group that are left are the wicked dead and mm -hmm. the the alive who were slain by the brightness of the coming, we see from Jeremiah mm -hmm. 25. So we're going to be looking over and making certain for ourselves. And, you know, I, for me, Pastor, I would trust God. If God says they weren't worthy, I'm okay. But the Lord is so anxious for us to, to, to see that he does all things well, that we get a chance to examine his work. Mm -hmm. We get a chance to look at what he's done uh, and... and uh, make sure for ourselves that he was just and fair. Mm -hmm. So that will be happening during that period. Yep. Yeah. I like the idea of, of judging and reigning. You know, we're, we're not going to be subject to death. We're not going to be subject to sin. We're going to be reigning. We're going to be above all of that. And, and that's, that's a what, pleasant thought. That's what uh, Daniel chapter 7 says. Precisely. It says the yes. kingdom will be given to Jesus mm -hmm. and to the saints of the world. And to the high. saints, precisely. Yeah, that's a nice thought. That's a nice thought. So we know how we're going to be occupying our time. And I guess we'll have time to get in a couple of questions. I've got a couple thousand. I think I'd like to, I'd like to, get, to get in maybe during that time <laughs> if I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, well, we'll probably be, be so happy there that uh, all the questions will kind of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. not be important. Yeah, at that point. you know, some of these things that we <laughs> kind of scratch our heads over now, you're probably right. Uh, won't have so much weight then because, first of all, you're going to be glad that you got in uh -huh. and uh, glad that those that who got in with you made their way in. But this whole thing is kicked off by the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, we go to meet Christ, we're ever with the Lord, and then this whole uh, odyssey begins uh, so, in heaven. So basically... Uh, this is where you would have the fulfillment of what Jesus said in John 14, 1 to 3, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where he said, uh, you know, talking about the place where God's people are going to be reigning, the place where they're going to be judging. Yes. Uh, Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Of course, where does the Father live? Mm -hmm. We pray our Father who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. So the, the, the first promise that Jesus makes is that he's going to take his people to his Father's house, which means that uh, we're going to go to heaven. Mm-hmm. But mm -hmm. heaven is not going to be our permanent home. No, no. Uh, and this belies the, the and it, I mean, this belief started way back in the, 18, uh, the 1800s, this idea that there was going to be a, a temporal thousand-year reign here on earth. Uh, and some thought that man was actually going to get better and better so that they mm -hmm. wouldn't need uh, anything else. But uh, no, Christ is going to put an end to the times that we see before us now. And uh, we start out in heaven with Jesus, reigning and, and judging. But Jesus also made another promise. He not only said that he was going to take us to his father's house, but he also said that the meek will inherit the earth. So Indeed. I guess that means I guess that means that uh, our trip to heaven is only going to be temporary during the thousand years. Yes, um, the Bible tells us after the thousand years were finished, uh, heaven comes back down. We get a chance to to you know, ultimately. Uh, we're going to live here on earth, mm -hmm. and I suspect we may have a summer home someplace else. But uh, <laughs> our, our our base place is going to be is going to be here on earth, and uh, again, that's spoken of here in Revelation chapter twenty. Um, uh, let me see, where am I? Uh, t -t 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 so basically, the New mm. Jerusalem, uh, uh -huh. the New Jerusalem is now in heaven. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus comes a second time. Uh, those who died resurrect, those who died in Christ resurrect, mm -hmm. those who are alive 
together they're caught up in the clouds, and then Jesus is going to take them to heaven for a thousand years mm -hmm. in the New Jerusalem because yes. the New Jerusalem is in heaven because mm -hmm. it's going to come down from heaven. Mm -hmm. So that must mean that uh, during the thousand years, God's people are going to be in the New Jerusalem in heaven, and only after the thousand years does the New Jerusalem come down with Christ and with his people going into the city and then the wicked resurrecting and surrounding the city. Well, I, uh, well said. I see that in verse 7. And when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. And, of course, we, we think of that prison as basically an a enforced vacation. He has nothing to do. Uh, the dead uh, who, were, who died in sin were, were remained dead. Those who are alive and sinners were slain by the brightness of his coming, and everybody else is in the kingdom. So he's, 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 he's chained because there's nothing to do. He can't go anywhere. He's confined here. There's no one to tempt, no one to rally, no one to lie to, no one to deceive, no one to murder. Uh, so he has nothing to do. So in verse 7, we see, now when a thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison, uh, from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. So there has been a resurrection of those evil people, and Satan goes back to his old activity, what he always does, in an attempt to, uh, again, battle against the people of God. So basically, the idea is that Satan is bound while the wicked are dead. Yes. Yeah. He's unbound when the wicked resurrect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. binding and unbinding has to do with whether his followers are alive or dead. Very much so. It's, it's a chain of circumstances. Uh, all the, the righteous are in heaven, praise God, and the wicked are dead, and there's nothing for him to do. It's a forced vacation. He only knows to do one thing. There's nothing good in him, Ellen White says. He is a liar and a murderer from, from the beginning. There's no one to lie to, no one to murder. They're all dead. And uh, with their resurrection, he can go back to his normal activities, which are very, very accustomed uh, as far as what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting here in verse 5, uh, it speaks about the wicked. It says, but the rest of the dead, that's talking about the wicked because mm -hmm. the righteous have resurrected at the beginning of a thousand years. Yes. It says, the rest of the dead did not live again mm -hmm. until the thousand years were finished. Yes. And that's what the Bible calls the second resurrection, the second resurrection. which is always after the thousand years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we, we, it, it, it suggest, well, doesn't suggest, it states there is going to be a resurrection of the dead uh, for a specific purpose. And of course, we're heading towards the second death. Um, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has pardoned the first resurrection over such the second death has no power. Uh, uh, and we praise the Lord. We praise the Lord for that. So they are revived. Satan goes at his work, and he he hasn't changed. There's nothing in him to change. So he does and uh, what he's always done: lie and deceive. Uh, and this time, uh, maybe they're thinking by their numbers and by uh, the deception. And, and Ellen White talks about the great generals who who have lived in the past, who, who knew how to strategize and knew how to make war, are all gathered together uh, in this attempt to destroy Christ's kingdom, but we know that it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, most Christians, that is conservative Christians mainly, uh, they believe that um, God's people are going to be here on this earth for a thousand years. And uh, I think the reason why they believe that is because of the two promises that Jesus made. Jesus promised to take his people to heaven. Mm -hmm. He also promised that uh, the meek would inherit the earth. Yes. So how can he fulfill both promises? Well, uh, you know, those who believe in the rapture of the church, the secret rapture, they think that the only way that, you can, that Jesus can fulfill both promises is if he takes his people to heaven for seven years. Mm -hmm. So that fulfills his first, first promise. Yes. And then he's going to bring them back yeah, bring here them back. Mm -hmm. to live here for a thousand years. Yeah. But, the, but the way the Bible presents it is so much more logical mm -hmm. how Jesus can fulfill both promises because yes. the Bible tells us that he's going to take us to heaven for a thousand years. Yes. That's where he fulfills the first promise mm -hmm. of us going to the Father's house. Mm -hmm. And after the thousand years, the wicked are destroyed. He makes a new heavens and a new earth. Mm -hmm. And that's where the second promise is fulfilled, Precisely. which is the meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah. It's much, it, as you said, it's much more logical. Uh, 
much more sane, dare I say. Uh, and of course, it fits with the Bible narrative. You've got to work your way through this a little slow, but as you do so, it unfolds in a very beautiful way. Uh, there's time for judging and judgment and looking over the records. Uh, and then Christ is about to execute the final because he hasn't really dealt with sin yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, of course, we know that finally there will be an eradication of sin and sinners. So he's got to deal with that. And uh, the scenario that you just, just laid out as the evangelical scenario doesn't include that final dispensation as far as sin is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got to be taken care of. Sin and sinners have to be finally wiped out or there can be no new heaven and new earth. Mm -hmm. uh, that presupposes that every taint of sin is gone. Right, right. And this scenario does that. I think uh, the answer to this question will not be complete unless we read uh, the verses where we are clearly told that God's people are going to have a role in judging Satan, his angels, and the wicked. Mm -hmm. uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 uh -huh, to 3. Uh -huh. uh, I knew that you had that in your notes. <laughs> so I'm going to have you read that, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 1 to 3. It's talking about lawsuits, you know, uh, church members suing other church members in secular courts. And the Apostle Paul says uh, that's a no-no. So mm -hmm. you want to read those verses? We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I begin at verse 1. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, you are worthy to judge uh, the smallest matters. You know, I like this. <laughs> I like this yeah. one a lot. Uh, the smallest matters. Do you not know that we shall judge angels much, how much more things that pertain to this life? Now I'm in verse 4. If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? And verse 5, I say this to your shame. Uh, is, it, is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren? And verse 6, but brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Man, if you can't Powerful settle text. your little differences yeah. here on earth, little measly things, <laughs> what made you think that you're going to be able to serve as a judge in a much greater judgment in yes, heaven yes. during the thousand years? It's, it's, a, it's a very poignant uh, point argument he's making here. We're going to judge Satan and fallen angels. We're going to look at the records of what they did. Uh, untold numbers of individuals who were not able to make it into the kingdom and meet God's requirements uh, or did not choose to. We're going to look at these weighty, weighty matters. Mm -hmm. So you've got a little problem here and you can't wrestle your way through that. How are you going to be able to wrestle with these cosmic issues yeah. and you can't yeah. fight your way through these little things here? Right. Very powerful point. So we should not go to court, secular courts of law to settle our little spats in the church. Yes, indeed. Yeah, <laughs> particularly the little spats in the church. Sometimes, you know, some big things happen and you need some legal advice. But uh, for the most part, you know, if, if we, and Ellen White says this, if we would get pride out of the way, she said most arguments can be settled in five minutes. Uh -huh. uh, but it's just, well, he did it to me. Yeah. And you can't get your pride yeah. out of the way. So, uh, you know, you bring in someone else and sometimes they don't have your best interest at heart. And the Very problem is text. that it gives the church a black eye. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, when church members go to secular courts and they're fighting with each other, mm -hmm. you know, people get a, a, a bad image of Christianity. You know, Very look at so. Christians. They're fighting all the time Very over these so. things. Very much so. So, you know, you have to have in first place the reputation of the church and of God, mm -hmm. Christ, who is the head of the church, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, not give a bad image to the yeah. secular yeah. world. That we are responsible for the image that we portray before a disbelieving world. Um, they shall know we are Christians by our love. So love ought to cover a multitude of sins. And love really ought to dictate how we portray mm -hmm. ourselves before an unbelieving world, who many times is just looking to see Jesus. They want to see Christ. Amen. Uh, and what we show them is uh, the, the, the polar opposite. Amen. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I think that we've answered that question pretty well. <laughs> we have another question, and I think we have enough time to deal with this one. Even though we have four, we're only going to be able to do two probably. Does the Bible forbid us to eat duck meat? <laughs> I'll throw that yeah. one at you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> years ago I went to a church and there was a pretty heated argument over this question. Um, 
So we, we went into Leviticus and we, we began to look at um, Leviticus, Leviticus 11. And uh, of course, the, the, the list of birds that are unclean to eat uh, tend to be birds that eat other birds or eat birds carrion of or eat or, or birds of prey. Eagles, hawks, the, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, we were looking to try to, to uh, I know of some Adventists who eat duck, and I know some that wouldn't touch it with mm -hmm. a 10-foot pole. When we were growing up, we were taught not to. So that's always sort of been in my, you know, when you start out young, it's hard to get changed when you, when you get a little sure. bit older. It's kind of been in the DNA. But um, it, it has webbed feet. Um, but I didn't see a particular prohibition in... Uh, in uh, the Word of God for duck, and I need I need to kind of lean on you to help me out with this one because I've had that discussion many times in many places. You know, I, I I'd heard that you cannot eat birds with webbed feet, mm -hmm. but then I looked in Deuteronomy 14 and Leviticus 11, yeah, where you have the two lists of clean and unclean uh, creatures, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find anything. On web feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? That's so the I exact said, same where do we yet. get where do we get the web feet thing from? And I wasn't able to find it in either one of those chapters. Um, so you know, I, I I don't think that the Bible forbids us to eat duck meat. But now let's talk about the different kinds of diets. Is eating meat uh, really the ideal thing? Even clean meats. Now that's a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little easier to to, to deal with. Um, we know that meat eating came as a result of, of uh, uh, the, the fact after the ark it was allowed, was not encouraged, right. uh, it, it was not the ideal, but it was allowed uh, because there were the plant, the vegetation had been destroyed. Uh, but it's not the best. Most doctors would tell you it's not the best. It's not the original diet. We certainly mm -hmm, know that. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything you get from from uh, meat eating, you can get from a good variety of plants and vegetables mm -hmm. uh, in your diet. So it's not the ideal diet, though it was allowed, it was not encouraged. And you know, just because something is allowed doesn't mean it's the best for you. Um, uh, the original diet of nuts, seeds, grains, vegetables, that's the best, that's the healthiest, and you can do quite well on that diet. So God doesn't exactly encourage us to have uh, bat soup, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if what we hear is, is so, that's what got us into this problem we're in right now. So no, he's not encouraging that. Evidently, <clears throat> uh, viruses can be transferred to human beings from animals and then from human being to human, human being. That's being. a scary thought. It is. When you consider the, the things that people eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Genesis chapter 1 verses 29 and 30 tells us yeah, what yeah. the mm -hmm. God's original diet is. Uh, it's a vegan diet. Uh, and this is, this is diet number A. See, there's diet A, which is uh, a vegan diet. Diet B, which is lacto-ovo vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Then you have a diet C, which allows the eating of so-called clean meats. And then you have uh, diet number four, which, uh, which is anything goes. Anything goes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, you want to read Genesis 129 and 30. And God said... See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. In verse 30, also, uh, to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given, ev I have given every green herb for food, and uh, it was so. So this is part of God's creation <clears throat> order. This is God's plan A. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, uh, you have other issues uh, in the news today, like, for example, how many genders are there? Mm -hmm. You know, the idea is that there could be 50 or 60 different genders. In yes. other words, whatever gender people think they are, that's it. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you go to God's original plan, it says that God created male and female. Yes. You know, you have the idea of gay marriage, a man marrying a man and a woman marrying a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact is that when you go back to Genesis, you find God's plan uh, as, as he intended it from the beginning. Precisely. And that is that God married Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Gen and, and then, of course, the day of worship comes in as well. Yes. You know, man has substituted all kinds of human traditions mm -hmm. 
based on human speculation. Yes. Contrary to what the Bible says, but we can always mm -hmm. we can always be on the right foot when we follow what the Bible yes. says. See, there is this one, and I think it's a sign of the last days, and, and, and maybe it's always this, that we want to negotiate with God. And we find that when you negotiate, you God knows best. It never turns out for the best. Um, Hezekiah, God said, you, you're going to die. Well, he negotiated 15 years. <laughs> didn't work out. Right. That's when Manasseh was born. Right. Uh, so it, it didn't work out. This thing of obedience becomes harder and harder as we come closer to the end of this earth's history. But the truth is, to obey is better than sacrifice. Amen. And God's been doing this God thing a long time, Pastor. He's right. good at it. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of like Israel, you know. Um, God said, um, I'm your king. Yes. Israel said, but the other nations, they've got kings that we can Precisely. see. Precisely, yeah. And so we want a king. Mm -hmm. And God said, not a good <laughs> idea. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to send your kids to war. You're going to be taxed. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't care. Yeah. We want a king. We want to be like that. And what was the result? Yeah. 800 years of apostasy mm -hmm. that ultimately led to the Babylonian captivity. Amazing. We got a little time. And on that point, you know, Ellen White says, and I didn't find this out until just a few years ago. She says, the king that they chose, he was, he was, he was the best looking guy around. He was yep. taller than everybody. So it was a beauty contest. She says, <laughs> Saul never felt the wing part of the Holy Spirit had no self-control mm -hmm. and, 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 would not, and was in, impetuous. Mm -hmm. So let's, he can't control himself. Let's give him the whole nation to control. Yeah. You see? <laughs> so man looks on the outer appearance. Yeah. God looks on the heart. So they, pick, they could not have picked a worse guy. He was a good-looking guy. Yeah. That's all he had. It was all veneer. Nothing going on inside. You know, the same th type of thing happened when Samuel went to find a, uh, a replacement for Saul. Mm. You know, uh, all of the sons of Jesse were yes. brought, and uh, he says, isn't there another one? He yeah. said, well, yeah, he's just a shepherd out in the field. You yeah. know, <laughs> he can't be the one. But he was the one he that God had one. chosen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we need to be careful about uh, looking at outward appearances. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, you know, our time is just about up. Uh, it's uh, been a great uh, time together to look into God's Word to answer the questions that you might have. Uh, I want to reiterate once again that you can send us your questions uh, I'll give you once again the address. You can see it on your screen, tv at sumtv.org, tv at sumtv.org. Thank you so much for sending us your questions. Also, I would like to thank everyone who supports Secrets Unsealed with your prayers, first of all, and also with your donations. It helps us continue bringing you programming Amen. that will feed your heart and will feed your soul. And so thank you so much once again for being with us. We hope to see you next time on this special program of questions and answers I'd like to know. I have got to buy a bottle with bigger paint and bigger lessons. I'm so accustomed <laughs> with...